Well, what happened is the water got low. It froze. Once it expanded, it broke up the seal. Character showed up. Water's an issue here right now, so. Hey, buddy. Hey, Dor. Your puppies look cool. Dor. Oh, you got it again. She, she had. Uh -huh. She had a, another set. <laughs> oh, she says. Just give me some loving. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty. This is Mike. No, not Magic Mike. <laughs> this is Colorado Mike. <laughs> Mike is a good friend outside of the Denver area, and he is a fireman um, for Colorado, Colorado Springs. Springs. Yep. And uh, we became friends through the bison world a couple years ago, and uh, we'll talk more about Mike. We got uh, he's gonna be hanging out with us for a week or so. Yep. And uh, now there's Thor, and this is uh, Fiona. So. Yeah, look at him. He's smiling at you. <laughs> Anyways, Colorado Mike and I come over to the OG, right? It's been a minute since we've been over here. Got the original silos have been here. Got some bicycles. We got tire tanks. We've got an issue with the tires. They're actually leaking. And so Mike and I went and just picked up some concrete bags of quickcrete. And uh, we're going to go see if we can patch the concrete because I know I've mentioned it, but Mr. Dunbar is coming back here and we've got to do some prepping so we can have, uh, we can do some proper uh, rotational grazing, get those tires back in order and plus work on our water well, which is right over here because uh, it went dry last summer and then I had a water well guy come look at it and then we have a air pressure tank problem. So I had to buy a new air pressure tank that we're gonna install in it as well so it's time to work a little bit and try to get these waters back in order and then hopefully the well has filled up over a year of not being used if not we can always use our rural water which is a bit more expensive uh from mom and kevin's rural water but we'll see what we can do so glad mike's here we got some work cut out for us now we gotta find end up there it is there's some of them. Now right, we got water. And an air pressure tank. Got our concrete. Bucket to mix. Shovel. We got it all. We got the bucket. All right. So this is tire tank that we installed two or three years ago. Spent a lot of time on it, running our water line a thousand foot all the way basically back up to the water well. And uh, this tire tank has worked really, really well. So what happened is uh, one problem that happened is the water well went dry. Uh, we had some issues with it because uh, we had three summers in a row of a hard hard drought and with that we had those issues but we were still able to kind of mechanically do it but we ran uh, mom and kevin's rural water we used their water and it still ran and fed these lines then winter came and uh, we were still able to use the rural water but what happened is uh we have like in a pasture like this, there were no bison. We didn't need it because the Dunbar uh, small group was at the Ponderosa. So we really weren't using these pastures. So we didn't have water coming to this tank specifically. Well, what happened is the water got low here and it froze. And just like our roads or situations like this in Oklahoma, and I'm sure lots of other places, when the water gets low, and seeps in once there's a little bit of crack and you can see some of these edges here once the water can find its way into the concrete and that little bitty crevice can be a fracture 
once it gets in there and it freezes, it expands. And that's what happens to kind of learn this from our a lot of our roads uh, that are so bad here in Oklahoma. Once it expanded, it broke up the seal basically on this tire and allowed it to leak. And so now this tire is leaking. And we've got one more that happened, did the same thing. All happened in the winter. We noticed it, that it was leaking. Uh, we made it work and we got by so that the bison could have water on the other tire up there. But now we've got to patch them because we're bringing a dumb bar over here. This is where that small herd's gonna be, is back in this pasture. So we need this going. The good thing is, is these pastures have a lot of recovery time and they're ready to go. Look at all this clover, so much clover which is great ground cover, a lot of forage here on this pasture, and uh, they'll be happy when they come over here, a lot of ground cover. So this is one of their bigger tire tanks because it splits two pastures, so you can easily rotate them back and forth if you need to. But we've got some patching to do for sure. Mike just cleaned this bottom out. It actually wasn't as dirty as I thought it would be. Now that we've got the bottom clean, got a little bit of water in there, that's okay. We're gonna start mixing concrete and we're gonna basically film, fill up to the rim is what we're gonna do. We're going to, you see the cracks here in the level, got a drain, got our main line with our Job uh, float. And so we're gonna come and fill this up right here and get this level and then make it one solid sheet um, or one solid concrete, I guess, whatever you call it. Um, floor bottom something and then hopefully cover up those seals <sighs> the honors dump the first one yeah. you just want to straighten the tank hmm? no i'd pour it in the bucket so let's mix it first i think it may be hard to mix it in the tank yeah what do you think what do you think it'll be okay This is how I built them. I came down here and just Five mixed gallon them. buckets. Yeah. It's not, you know, good, people good will make their comments and say that's not the proper way to do it, but this is the way we're doing it. This is a sweat equity. This right is here. a ranching way. Sweat equity. First one's going in. That was a bag and a quarter. That's, I might need 15 bags. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Gonna take a little bit. Yep. Bad. Character showed up. All right, so Mike and I got it all full. The bottom rim of this tire is full. Um, got our drain cleaned away. Pop the cap off just to test it. But what we tried to do is, this is this is the, the ranching way, don't forget. So um, we took and we tried to shove it up against the back as, as possible. And then we want a downflow to the center of the tire rim and uh, towards our drain. When I set this tire, it was on a, 
a slope and I didn't do a very good job of leveling it. So that's our low side. Um, but when we do want to drain it now, we hope that the water will drain towards the center. So we put our highest point of the concrete around the edges. And um, anyway, so we'll see. We've got our concrete here. So our seal is about right in there and hopefully um, it seals it really good. But if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have done it this way the first time. I'd have concreted the whole thing. I think on one of these, I actually did. I concreted the whole thing. So, um, you kind of mixed, uh, if you watch YouTube, you get kind of mixed. Yeah. You just fill the center and then some do the some, whole, Yep. You the just, bottom. it's just learning from others and then yourself, basically. So that's why we went ahead and sealed the whole thing, got the whole bottom floor concrete. We'll let it dry for a day or two and we'll come back and turn the water on. If our water well is uh, refurbished again with some groundwater uh, because of the recent droughts we've had and our new air tank that we have in our truck. So we're gonna go install it right now. We'll let this dry. We'll come back a day or two and uh, test it. We'll fill it up with some water and see if we get any air bubbles and see if it holds um, for water. I guess is how we'll test it. So hopefully no more leaks, <laughs> but right. So some of you are wondering who these are or what animals we still have over here. A lot of these are, are um, animals that are used in our meat side of things. Uh, so we've got some last year's, couple of last year's calves in here, which are yearlings now. And then we have some Yearlings coming into two in this little group here. So that's some of those guys. And then up here at the barn are our two to three year old bulls that we use for our processing. So this tank, um, it's kind of, you see these silos all the time. Here's some of our processing bulls here. So this one's split also. It's an old dairy barn is right here. And that's an old loading ramp for uh, the people who had this before mom and Kevin. So, um, but here, I told you I did a, I had a tank where I did the whole floor. Now this is a much smaller tire, but they're smaller paddocks. So I did a smaller tire here. And then what I did with these panels is you can actually pick this panel up and you can move it. And I had a little try thing going to try to keep them out of it because these guys are turds and yearlings, and young bulls will get in it. But right there, it's not much of a space. So it's going to they're having a hard time getting in it, but you can pull these panels back and make like a triangle and give them less space. Let me get to my point. In the winter, we came here and I saw water bubbling out of this one. So if you notice this tank, I went ahead and poured concrete over the whole platform. Now, my mistake is I probably didn't raise the level up high enough of the concrete. I did a pretty good job with it getting it level, but it probably needed to come a little bit higher and get above the rim. You can see some of the the tire right here and so you can see some of the concrete is broken and it's chipped away but i remember coming in here in the winter time remember coming here in the winter time and i thought i remember seeing it bubble up right here in this area leaking because i should have brought the level all the way up above the rim of the tire and uh leveled it out instead of dropping below but we could come back and seal this with um like here this it sealed really good didn't it mike you can yeah. see yeah. there's no there's no issues right here and in, in some of this stuff it sealed really good now it's broken here but there's no cracks it did crack in here so i'm not sure but lesson learned one of the things that we've learned about these obviously is one your water well went dry. Sometimes you can't control it if the water table, um, you know, lowers and you lose, uh, you lose that. Well, this is a hand dug well and it was pumping out at 33 feet uh, when we started this and it ran for two summers and then we had, those were hard, hard droughts. But, um, so that was the problem, like I mentioned earlier. But other than that, I think the biggest lesson learned about these tanks is you don't let them go dry. Um, especially in the winter in the summer 
obviously if the water goes away from it that concrete can crack without that moisture um, but this one is held up pretty well uh, but the other thing is in the winter for sure lesson learned do not let them go dry in the winter because that water will seep down in any of these little crevices and then can expand so lesson learned on that now we are uh we're gonna go check out the water well see if we're gonna plate this replace this water pressure tank and see if we got water in the water well there's no telling we uh we may have water in it we may not it hasn't pumped water out for over a year so it's gonna be pretty exciting to see if we can get this water well going again if we've got water in our groundwater so mom and kevin's property is actually sitting on the um, arbuckle simpson aquifer on the east side of sulfur huge aquifer which also feeds our national park and different portions of sulfur but on the west side of sulfur which is where the ponderosa is there is no aquifer and if you guys don't remember last year we tried to drill water wells at the ponderosa and when we didn't hit it 160 feet in one spot moved over and tried 100 feet didn't uh, hit at all so that was definitely uh hurt us bad uh, definitely money out of our pocket gone disappeared and uh anyways so water's an issue here right now and so we're uh we're gonna go see maybe if we've got any water mm-hmm All right, so we're in the well house. It's nice, got a new box and stuff. We installed this water system. Got our one inch um, main line here, or this is our outflow. Uh, pump right down in here. This old pressure tank, as you can see, has seen better days, but it, hey, it lasted. And, and the water wall guy that was here first that got us all going on this whole system said that it was working, but this dude is out now. So, we have uh, got to replace it um, right now. That's what we're going to do next. Well, there's not much air in there. Yeah, there wasn't much in there. So what he taught me was, as he says, there's a bladder in here. Yep. And uh, I was talking about how the bladder can basically get in front of the line where there's the water pressure can't, or the air pressure can't force the line because the bladder covers it. I don't. That makes sense. I don't know everything about it, but that's just what he told me. So he said it's time to go. Well, Mike and I dove in to the well house and started work on it. We were short of some plumbing supplies to really finish the job to see if the water well worked and stay tuned and be ready we ran into some issues while mike was visiting here at the ponderosa with the big joe hurt so stay tuned for that marissa and i'll be back marissa and i'll be back at the og at mom and kevin's place working on the water tanks and making sure the patching worked and we'll see if our water well has got water back in it jerky is back in stock just wanted to tell you guys that it is specific cuts of bison meat that stuff goes super fast. Don't forget to check out our website at crosstimmersbison.com. If you guys are ever interested in our bison products, some bison apparel straight from the Ponderosa, you guys can check out our bundles or our four pack of jerky. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll keep on bison ranching.